video we'll look at an example of linearization this is the real example this is a MEMS capacitive motor uh, the MEMS capacitive motor is essentially a variable capacitor uh, this is the input voltage there is some resistance in the mm, wiring that's R and we see is the voltage across the two plates of a capacitor now these are two, two plates this is the mo moving plate and this is the stationary plate uh, the dis the distance uh, the common distance between the two plates is x the, the gap between the capacitors is d and there are six of these capacitors in parallel now these are leaf springs right here and this is the proof mass now the mechanical model we derived uh, previously in a previous lecture is given by mx double dot plus b a times x dot plus k equivalent times x equal to fc fc is the force uh, uh, due to the capacitive action here um, here b a is the um, damping due to air this is you can call think of this as air resistance k equivalent is the equivalent spring constant of these leaf springs there are one two three and four of these the electrical model is given by b i equal to epsilon h times x dot divided by d times v c plus epsilon not h times x divided by d times v c dot times 6 r the 6 is because of the 6 uh, capacitors in uh, parallel plus v c v c is the voltage across the capacitor x is the common distance between the plates epsilon is the permittivity of free space um, h is the depth here so and uh, d is the distance between the plates now what i've done essentially here is done kirchhoff's uh, laws is vi equal to i times r time plus vc so this r is actually it's a small typo here this r is actually this this r here so six times r is essentially there are six capacitors um now uh, and then you have the coupling equation this is a coupling equation that couples the electrical and mechanical domain and the force fc is given by six times epsilon h vc squared divided by t now what does what makes this uh, system of equations uh, non-linear is the fact that we are multiplying two functions of time now, x varies with time x dot varies with time vc varies with time and we are multiplying these two together same thing here x varies with time vc dot varies with time multiplying these two together that makes it non-linear this equation it makes it non-linear because we have the term vc squared this equation is not really non-linear but you know there is a steady state to this equation that we need to figure out so let's look at the electrical equation vi is this and we need to linearize this we derive the equilibrium equation by setting all derivatives to zero so in the equilibrium position let's say the input vi is vi naught um, vc is vc naught and x equal to x naught that's the equilibrium point that's the operating point and we know at equilibrium all derivatives go to zero so x naught dot goes to zero we see naught dot goes to zero so we get that and that gives us v i zero is equal to v c zero so in the equilibrium position the input voltage equilibrium input voltage is equal to the equilibrium voltage across the capacitor now we put up the equations we say v i goes like vi naught plus delta vi we put up vi about the equilibrium voltage same thing with vc same thing with vc dot same thing with x and same thing with x dot and then we write the put up equation by just substituting for vi vc vc dot x and x dot and that's that's what gives you this equation so this is vi uh, this is x vc x and this is VC again. Now, the nonlinear term is right here. All right, nonlinear term is right here. Now, how do you linearize that? Uh, we can write that as the nonlinear term is F is epsilon h x dot V C plus uh, divided by D plus epsilon h x divided by D times V C dot. Now. Uh, some of you might get confused now how do we handle x dot vc dot so on and so forth essentially the function f is a function of four variables what are the variables x dot vc x and vc dot and that's all just to tailor expansion of that 
and at equilibrium you have the value of the function is f naught you substitute x equal to x dot equal to x dot naught which is zero vc equal to vc naught x equal to x naught vc dot is equal to vc dot vc naught dot now this also is zero now we'll linearize the nonlinear terms using Taylor expansion like I said this is a function of four variables x x dot vc and vc dot so we write the Taylor series expansion so the perturbed uh, nonlinear function is nearly equal to the function evaluated at equilibrium plus partial of f with respect to x that's the first variable evaluated at the equilibrium point times delta x plus partial of f with respect to x dot evaluated at the equilibrium point times delta x dot partial of f with respect to vc evaluated at the equilibrium point here times delta vc plus partial of f with respect to vc dot evaluated the, at the equilibrium point times delta vc dot and we write that um, if you do the partial derivatives this is what you get right this is what you get so these are the terms so partial of f with respect to x is this partial of f with respect to x is this term partial of f with respect to vc is this term and partial f with respect to vc dot is this term now evaluate everything at the equilibrium point and if you do that vc dot not is zero so that term drops, drops out this is zero we know that that remains vc not is not zero this term drops out because x dot not is zero and then you keep, keep this term because x not is not zero so this is what you get this is your linear linearized uh, function now we take that and substitute that for the perturbed terms right like so and in here you substitute the equilibrium equation equilibrium equation basically states that vi not equal to vc not and those two cancel out like that and that leaves you with the linearized equation Similarly, we can go and do the coupling equation, same deal here. Derive the equilibrium equations by setting all derivatives equal to zero. You can't, there are no derivatives, but then you set Vc equal to Vc naught. That gives you the equilibrium force on the mass, proof mass. Uh, Part of the equation, Fc equal Fc naught plus delta Fc, Vc equal Vc naught plus delta Vc. Write the part of the equation, linearize nonlinear term. So the function f here this is the nonlinear term here it's just a function of one variable vc naught vc not vc naught vc naught is the equilibrium value so function of vc naught plus delta vc is function of vc naught plus partial of f with respect to vc evaluated the vc naught times delta vc and uh, substitute all the values and then finally substitute uh, the linearized uh, uh, nonlinear term into the perturbed equation and this is what you get right and then substitute the equilibrium equation we know that from equilibrium fc not equal to this term and then you get the uh, linearized equation right. mechanical equation same thing uh, at equilibrium set all derivatives equal to zero and that gives you fc naught equal to k equivalent times x naught. You put up the equation, same old deal, nothing special here. So x, x dot, x double dot, and fc dot, fc about the equilibrium point. Write the put up the equations like so. Now there are no nonlinear terms here, so you just substitute the equilibrium equations. In equilibrium, you know that this is zero, this is zero and case k equivalent times x naught equal to fc naught like so and you get your linearized equation like so now, that gives you the mechanical model linearized electrical model linearized and the coupling equation linearized